over to my side of the room. Well, that's different than <laughs> social distancing, so. Yeah, guess we're on top of we each other. We got one minute. There's uh, Vice Chair Miller. Right yes. on time. All right, it's I four still have not received information on the architect of the Capitol. I, you know, um, I'm not okay. sure. What so we will, we will, uh, I'll just say this, Peter, we will fill in. I know uh, Commissioner Miller has the next BZA for Mr. Turnbull and I'm going to ask, which later on in November, we'll check with you, Commissioner Shapiro, and see if you can fill that seat that night. And we'll start, we'll keep rotating. All right, I guess we can get started. Uh, Mr. Young, could you start recording? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today's date is September 23rd, 2021. We are convening broadcasting this public hearing by video conferencing. My name is Anthony Hood. Joining me are Vice Chair Miller and Commissioner Shapiro. We're also joined by the office's only staff, Ms. Sharon Shellen, Mr. Paul Young, who will be handling all of our virtual operations. Others will introduce themselves at the appropriate time. Tonight's subject of this uh, tonight's zoning commission cases subject is um, zoning commission case number 0536M. This is a PUD modification of significance for a special exception for an animal sales care and boarding use in order to add it to the approved PUD uses. Um, the applicant is proposing to operate a dog daycare center, dog grooming and boarding use on the ground floor of a phase two of the original case, original building, or phase two building. The virtual public hearing notice is available on the offices on his website. This proceeding is being recorded by a court reporter and the platforms used are webcast live, WebEx and YouTube live. The video will be available on the offices on his website after the hearing. All persons planning to testify should have signed up in advance and will be called on by name at the appropriate time. At the time of sign up, all participants will complete the oath or affirmation required by subtitle Z, section 408.7. Accordingly, all those listening on WebEx or by phone will be muted during the hearing, and only those who have signed up to participate or testify will be unmuted at the appropriate time. When called, please state your name and home address before providing your testimony. When you are finished speaking, please mute your audio. If you experience difficulty accessing WebEx or with your telephone call in or have not signed up, then please call our OZ hotline number at 202-727-5471. If you wish to file written testimony or additional supporting documents during the hearing, then please be prepared to describe and discuss it at the time of your testimony. The hearing will be conducted in accordance with the provisions of 11Z BCMR chapter four as follows, preliminary matters, are the applicant's case, the applicant has up to 60 minutes. I'm not sure if we need 60 minutes. Report of the Office of Planning and District Department of Transportation. Report of other government agencies. Report of the ANC. In this case, it's ANC 6C. Testimony of organizations. Five minutes, individuals, three minutes. And we will hear in the following order from those who are in support, opposition, or undeclared. Then we will have rebuttal and closing by the applicant. Again, any issues, the OZ hotline number is 202-727-5471. With that, I will turn it over, uh, ask Michelle, do we have any preliminary matters? I think she's on mute. Mr. I'm Chair. sorry, uh, Chairman Hood. I've got Mr. Hughes on the phone, but um, he is trying to log in. <laughs> Holland and Knight has blocked our link for him. And so he's uh, working through that. But before that, we'll go ahead. Um, there is a motion um, that uh, to for the waiver of the technical requirement for um, the name of each lessee. Um, that was granted already. And then we go to expert witnesses. We have, of course, Shane Detman, who has previously been accepted. We'd ask that he be accepted in this case. And then Scott Pfeiffer in acoustical design. His resume is at Exhibit 27B. If the commission would consider him. Mr. Hughes, was there any? Okay, other thank you, concerns? Michelle. Um, commissioners, let me also Shane acknowledge. Shane will not be participating. It's just Mr. Pfeiffer. Michelle, could you go put, put yourself on mute, please? Thank you. 
Uh, let me also acknowledge we have Ms. Alexandra Kane, who's our counsel. I, I did not acknowledge her. Our counsel is always here with us in the background, but I, I'm going to start make sure I acknowledge them because they help us out <laughs> tremendously. Um, we, we've already, I, I did check with counsel. We're good uh, as far as the granting, uh, which as Michelle has already mentioned. Um, Mr. Debman, we have already previously accepted any objections to continue our status. See no objection. And Forgot who was it? Was that Mr. Tamaris? Forgot Michelle and Mr. Pfeiffer. Mr. Was it Mr. Pfeiffer? And he's being proffered. I don't know. Missed that. Yes, an acoustical um, design. Mr. Pfeiffer at 27B is the exhibit. Okay. Now, let me no objection, ask, Mr. Chair. Okay, but let me ask this before before we uh, once before we had someone. For a cuticle design, and I, I'm trying to remember. Did we did we give them expert status? I didn't thought. I thought we didn't do that for acoustical acoustics. Does anybody else recall? You recall that, Commissioner Vice Chair Miller? I'm sorry, I, I do not recall. Uh, I, I thought in GW or Georgetown, maybe Georgetown and acoustics was it? Um, um, I, I certainly don't have, I'm not gonna make a big issue, but I just, unfortunately, uh, Commissioner May, I remember that discussion and I think he led it. And I don't believe we, we acknowledged it and I can't remember the reason why. But so as soon as I can't remember the reason why and nobody else can, we will go ahead and uh, make Mr. Pfeiffer uh, offer him expert status in acoustics. If we could have Mr. Young bring Mr. Hughes in. Okay, any objections to Mr. Pfeiffer? Uh, Vice Chair, I know Commissioner May, I mean, Shapiro doesn't. Okay, all right. So we will give him expert status. Mr. Hughes, whenever you get set, um, you may. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Mr. Hughes. And can you cannot see me, I take it? Yes, you have I to do. turn your camera on. I, I, I will ask you why did your uh, firm. Um, I don't know what did they do. They deleted us, or they blocked us. Why did they do that? I mean, that's the no, first it, question. I'm sure it's not you. It's it's a, they're very militaristic in terms of uh, adding on things. I guess they expect we're going to be playing games during the day. I I don't know. I apologize. <laughs> um, and let me let me try to start my video. Although you might be okay. disappointed, there I am. There you go. There you go. And. and well, I last presented before you a few months ago that there was some starting and stopping. So if 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 you, if that happens again, please just yell at me or something, and I'll I'll turn my, my video off. I think I think uh, Mr. Hughes, go ahead and turn it off now because it's starting to do that now. So turn it off now and let your uh, firm know that um, we're going to be looking at them and wondering why we were we are being blocked. But anyway, you you may proceed. Bear, bear with me, please. I can't even get the video okay. to stop. <laughs> well, it's, it's stop now if that helps. Okay. Uh, right. So, Mr. Mr. Hood, uh, should should I just go ahead and introduce our the the application and our witnesses? Yeah, let's go ahead and let's see how, how it goes. And if it's a problem, we'll let you know. Okay. Good good after member good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. For the record, my name is Dennis Hughes with the firm of Holland and Knight. Uh, I'm appearing today on behalf of Toll DC2 LP, which is the owner of a mixed use residential and retail uh, development in Square 749, uh, 749 in the Noma neighborhood. It's known uh, as Union Place. Uh, joining me for our presentation today are uh, Mally Temeros, who is the National Director for Toll's Retail Portfolio, and she happens also to be a district resident, and Mr. Michael Pastreach, who is the owner of Colby's Dog Care and Spa and the prospective operator of the dog care facility that we're here to discuss with you this afternoon. Uh, so I'll just stop. And, are you having any trouble hearing me? Okay, terrific. Um, and, and you've qualified, uh, and thankfully, uh, thank you for qualifying Mr. Pfeiffer 
of Threshold Acoustics. He is an expert in acoustical design as his resume, uh, I think strongly su uh, uh, suggests uh, and confirms. He's gonna be available uh, to answer any questions that you might have with regard to the specifics of the sound attenuation measures that we are proposing for the dog care use. Um, so before I turn things over to Mally and Michael for their brief testimony, I'd like to provide you a summary background of the project and the nature of the application. Uh, in essence, we're appearing today to request a special exception uh, to locate a dog care with grooming and boarding in what is an established mixed use residential retail building in a mixed use zone where such uses are permitted by special exception when they're located at the ground level and above. Uh, we've detailed in our extensive materials in the hearing record uh, and what we, we will summarize uh, in a moment with our witnesses that we fully satisfy the applicable criteria and conditions established for the dog care use. Um, and so um, there's one thing I'd like to take this opportunity to clarify for you uh, and also for anyone who may be uh, following the proceedings today is that the hearing notice uh, correct references animal care, I'm sorry, animal sales care and boarding uses as the proposed special exception use. Uh, that language is directly pulled from subtitle B section 200, which is the definition of, of the category uh, as a categorical categorical definition that includes the uses we're proposing. Uh, I just want it to be clear, and, and Mr. Pastrich will, will uh, reinforce this. There's no, the, the, the request here is not to operate a pet store in this space. Uh, there's no pet sales, um, animal sales contemplated. This is purely going to be a dog care, uh, grooming and boarding use. Uh, so I just wanted to put that out for anyone who, who might've had some uh, questions about it. Um, so, um, you know, this is, as I said before, this is a special exception approval, which is generally reviewed by the BZA. Um, however, because the property where the use is proposed is the subject of a longstanding uh, approved PUD, multi-phase PUD, uh, re re a review of this special exception by the Zoning Commission is appropriate, uh, as it will require limited modification uh, to the PUD approval, uh, which has an extensive history. Um, Union Place, the, uh, the building we're here to talk to you about today, is the second phase of the PUD, and it's located uh, in Square 749, which is bounded to its west by 2nd Street Northeast, to its south by K Street, uh, to its east by 3rd Street, and uh, to its north uh, by L Street. Uh, it, it's 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 two two apartment buildings. The Lori Grand was constructed first and is not part of this application. Union Place was constructed more recently and took uh, began occupancy, I believe, in 2019. Uh, it was approved for approximately 525 residential units and about uh, just under 14,000 square feet of retail. But that retail happened to include a commitment to provide a, a sizable daycare use, which is not technically retail. Um, and, and as Mally may mention, and I'll just steal her thunder a little bit, uh, that daycare use opened earlier this month and uh, it's just, uh, expect it to be a terrific addition to the community. Um, so there remains just under 7,000 square feet of ground floor space within Union Place. And, you know, I'm just gonna check in. You can still, everybody can still hear me, right? <laughs> okay, great. And, uh, and it's that 7,000 square feet of space, which is at, the, at an isolated corner, the Northwest corner of the building, uh, very close to the uh, rail overpass, uh, a large stone retaining wall. And then you've got the, uh, the, the L Street uh, underpass under, under those tracks and some uh, light industrial uh, and commercial uses to the north. Uh, and, and this space has remained vacant despite extensive retail le leasing efforts by the owner. Uh, Mally will get into that a little bit more. Um, and, and so um, with that background, uh, the, the owner engaged with Colby's daycare and Mr. Pastrich uh, and, and just noting the, the, the very great demand for dog care facilities in the neighborhood uh, which has only been exacerbated by the, the health emergency. Um, we're we're uh, deciding, you know, sort of switching gears here and, and proposing for that remaining 7,000 square feet for it to be used as, as a dog care and boarding facility. Um, we believe it'll be a very beneficial addition to the community. Uh, it's, keeping, it's in keeping with the other amenities that the, that the building owner is offering the tenants. And uh, we believe it uh, is completely in harmony with the zoning regulations and won't adversely affect use of neighboring property in accordance with the regulations. Um, 
and our, our, as I said before, our, we've, we've submitted multiple pre-hearing submissions where we've laid out the detailed compliance with, with, the, with the special exception criteria and, and, and noted the language proposed for your approval to, to modify the PUD. Um, glad to get into that further as you see fit. Um, um, before, before I turn, turn the uh, presentation over to Mally, I do want to note that the project is supported by the Office of Planning. Uh, we we thank, uh, thank that office for its review, especially uh, Mr. Cochran uh, for his, his time in review and, and, and input. Uh, and, and he has been involved with this uh, site even longer than I have. And I think his involvement may date back to the 20th century. So, um, so we appreciate that. And you've just received this afternoon, I believe, the record, uh, the, the recommendation, unanimous recommendation from the ANC uh, in support, uh, recommending support of our application. And we certainly appreciate uh, their consideration. We've been ex uh, involved, or we've been in discussions with our uh, SMD and with the PES, uh, Planning and Zoning Committee for months. And we really appreciate their consideration and, and, and feedback. So with that long-winded introduction, I wanna turn the presentation over to Mally and uh, ask her to uh, share her testimony with you. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Mally Timoros. Uh, can you all hear me and see me? Yes. Okay, okay. So as, uh, thank you, Dennis. Um, as Dennis mentioned, um, I am the retail portfolio director at Toll Brothers Apartment Living. I oversee the retail component of our mixed use projects across the country. Um, we currently have more than 20 projects across nine different markets that fit that description, retail on the ground floor and residential above. Um, in total, we have about, we have a little more than 600,000 square feet of retail across those projects. Um, but of course, DC is close to my heart. I am a DC resident. I live in Adams Morgan. I work in DuPont Circle um, at our corporate office here in DC. Um, and of course, I also spend plenty of time at the Union Place community in Noma, as well as our other development sites, Banner Lane um, at Sorsum Sur Corda and Vermeer on Buzzard Point. Um, we started the lease up effort for the retail at Union Place uh, more than three years ago. Uh, we engage uh, a best in class broker, Rappaport, um, in August of 2018 um, and started our campaign to market the um, about 16,000 square feet of uh, retail at Union Place. Um, we are delighted to mention that we have executed leases with a day, daycare, um, which is in the space. So not only an executed lease, we now have an open and operating daycare as of uh, September 7th. Uh, they opened their doors the day after Labor Day. Um, that is in the retail space facing K Street. Um, we also have an executed lease and an open and operating tenant on the other side of the project facing L Street. F45, which is a boutique fitness operator. They do HIT workouts, high intensity interval training. Um, they are actually an international concept out of Australia. Um, and we were delighted to bring a fran franchise location um, to, to Union Place uh, and have both of those retailers, the daycare and the, the fitness operator open earlier this year. Um, the, uh, the effort to lease the space, uh, along 2nd street, really at the corner of 2nd and L with, with storefront, both along 2nd street and along L street, um, has had some challenges. It's been an active marketing effort really over the past 3 years. Um, of course, uh, I mean, setting the backdrop for retail leasing just in general across our portfolio. As an increasing share of consumer spending moves online, that is a headwind that we face uh, across all retail space. Um, and, and with that in mind, the oversupply uh, of retail that exists just broadly um, across the country, when you have specific site specific challenges to retail space, it can really be quite difficult um, to find the right tenant for that space. And with the elevated rail across uh, 2nd street from our, uh, the retail space that we're discussing here today, um, that, that can be a challenge to get attention uh, for that retail space. 
because there's no activation. Um, there's no cotenancy. There's no energy to exchange um, across either side of the street and the, the benefits of, of merchandising mix um, and critical mass um, to a specific location. Um, I, I would also add that our site is between a couple of different vibrant retail nodes. You have the nucleus of Noma around the Metro station. You have the H street corridor. And of course you have union market district. I'm particularly familiar with union market district because I joined toll coming from Eden's. Um, and I worked at the Eden's office at union market and, and worked on that development. Uh, when retailers consider coming to this part of the district, they do have an abundance of options. Um, that was the case uh, prior to the pandemic, and that has only become more of a challenge since the pandemic with the additional supply um, coming online, uh, second generation supply built out retail locations as, as retailers have closed. Um, so when as we as we went through that effort, we really were looking to identify the right tenant to join our community in the final retail space. And when we connected with Mr. Pastreach and his concept, Colby's Dog Care and Spa, um, really right away, we felt that that was a, an excellent fit for our project, for the community, for the neighborhood. We do see dog daycare as a growing category across all of our markets across the country. Um, dog ownership has only continued to increase through the pandemic. That is absolutely the case at Union Place. Um, I was I was on. I was there today walking inside and outside the building. There are dogs everywhere. You know, I won't, I, I won't share any of the data about our, uh, how many people pay pet fees every month, uh, but it continues to grow and it's, it's evident um, and, and abundant. Um, so we, not only did we feel that Colby's dog care and spa was a good use in and of itself, um, but also it brings a nice compliment to our other tenants, F45 and Bright Start Daycare, we really see the potential for the same customer um, using services from all three of these retailers. And further, it's a nice complement to the other retail in our node in, in Noma um, at, at Uline um, and at Lori Grand as well. Um, uh, so th as these, as additional retail has come online here, um, we really feel the, the fabric of the neighborhood uh, continues to strengthen and that Colby's can be a nice part of that uh, community. Um, I want to mention, I want to emphasize Toll Brothers' commitment to the success of this project. We have a vested interest in the success of this project. Um, we want to see our retail thrive and uh, we want to see our residential units upstairs uh, st stay well occupied, of course, as well. So it's of critical importance to us that we work with our tenant with Colby's to manage um, the, its impact on our residents and the surrounding neighborhood. I feel very confident in the plan that um, Mr. Pastreach has put together and, and will share with us uh, here shortly. Um, last but not least, we have um, been in active communication with both the neighborhood and our residents. Um, our neighborhood through communication and multiple open forums uh, at the ANC and direct communication with our residents through our resident portal. We had a yappy hour event on August 3rd that was open to all of the residents of our building. It was very well attended. Uh, we also sent a recap after the event um, to invite our community to engage with us. Um, and these points of communication have affirmed um, the desire and demand for the for Colby's dog care and spa. Molly, um, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. This is Dennis. Uh, I, I should have mentioned uh, if Mr. Young can hear me, could you please bring up our presentation? Oh, and you. while Molly transitions to um, Mr. Pastreach, uh, we we can just give you a sense of the relationship of the spaces. So it'll be the first slide. Um, and Molly, if you if you could just kind of point out, well, sure. it's somewhat self-explanatory, but maybe reference this this slide for the uh, location of so, and so yes. forth, and then we'll turn it over to Michael for uh, for his comments real quickly. Thank you. Oh yes, the, well this is good. I was right. I was I was wrapping up, um, and this is a good visual to show the space that we're discussing at the corner of Second and L. Um, you can see that the three retail spaces 
uh, they, they really, I mean, they face every side of our project. Um, and by activating the space at second and out, it really gives an opportunity to activate um, every, every part of the streetscape um, uh, and, and contributes to the placemaking surrounding this project. Um, and and just, last and but not least, this is a, this is a good reminder for me also about our uh, how close we are to Swamp Poodle Park, uh, the first portion that has been delivered to date, and the second portion that will also be delivered in in the near future. Um, again, just supporting the the vibrant um, community of dog owners. Thank you very much, Melanie. And just so I don't we don't confuse the commissioners, you, uh, you, you don't have to turn your head to the right very sharply because the orientation on this image is off uh the north is to the right uh yes. and uh and so i apologize for that but just in case there's any confusion there l street run run is, is showing up and down uh on the right side um and so forth so thank you for that and and mindful of our you know, our time and i apologize for running over with with mine uh michael if you could introduce yourself and and, and share share your testimony with the commission thank you Wonderful. Well, uh, thank you all for allowing uh, us to present today. I, I'm, I'm truly grateful. Um, Mr. Young, would you mind uh, going to the next slide, please? Thank, thank you. Um, I'm, what I, my plan is to go through what I, I believe to be the most salient points as efficiently as, as I can in order to leave as much room, time as possible at the end for you to ask whichever specific questions uh, resonate with each one of you uh, as, as possible. Mr. Young, if you wouldn't mind advancing. The, the, the problem that, that we're trying to solve is that the pandemic has led to an explosion in pet ownership. Uh, pet parents are now, as they return to work, uh, in need of a solution of what to do with their, with, with their pets. Uh, and this is a real crisis. This is mainly hitting younger adults, mainly people who aren't from Washington, D.C., so they either have no or limited uh, local family. Um, and it's usually people who either um, are single or not yet parents. Mr. Young, if you wouldn't mind advancing. Um, and, and where we're located is in the middle of a, a real dog daycare desert. If you draw a circle around Colby's, uh, half a mile circle, at the moment, there is only one existing dog daycare that holds about 70 dogs um, within a half a mile of us. Um, there's, there's soon gonna be another one opening, but it's even smaller than the, the one existing. If you draw a circle that's a mile around, you don't add any more. If you just cross that one mile, then you'll add a, a, a third dog daycare, um, but it's even smaller than either of the other two. Um, Mr. Young, if you wouldn't mind. So I think this is a bigger problem than Colby's. We're part of the solution. Uh, what we're going to provide is daycare, sleepovers, grooming, wellness, and training. Um, the uh, Mr. Young, um, the uh, this is going to be a high end facility. Um, we're breaking the, the dogs into four different play areas so that we can create the right environment for each uh, each dog. Uh, since um, half of our kids will be resting at any given moment, no more than about half, uh, half a dozen dogs or about 12 ish dogs will be playing in any given room at any time. Um, if, if we walk through this space in sort of a circle starting in the upper left-hand corner, um, there we have our, our large dog room. Then next to that um, is the uh, one of the two medium-sized dog rooms. Then next to that is my office. Below my office is our break room. Next to my office is the lobby. Below that are the restrooms. Across from the restrooms, we'll have two luxury suites uh, for the higher end uh, uh, dog care. 
Um, the then below there is our small dog uh, play area. In the upper left hand corner of the small dog area, you'll see there's a place for someone to sleep overnight. Then you'll see a long skinnier uh, run. That's our, our grooming area. Then to the left of the grooming area is the uh, final uh, play area, uh, another medium sized dog uh, uh, play area. And then next to that is the work area. Then you'll see each of the play areas has access to what we call a tap room. That's a, a, a separately ventilated space where waste can be quickly brought um, from the play areas, cleaned and, 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 and stored. Um, and there will be a, a, a mop uh, a mop sink and the ability to uh, keep the place uh, thoroughly clean. Um, as uh, we are uh, quite dedicated to being very good neighbors in the area, and and so I think it, the there are, I'd like to delve into what I think are probably the most salient regulations um, that the, to think about here as we look out for the, for the neighborhood: sound, odor, and waste. As as we start with sound, Mr. Young, if you wouldn't mind. Um, the the first one there um, we have um, on, on every wall will have multiple layers of sound attenuating blanket, Mr. Young, which is then covered by a layer of uh, five eighth inch Jimson board, Mr. Young. Then the, the ceiling is an eight inch slab of concrete, um, and then sprayed on there, Mr. Young, we have a product called K13, which dissipates the sound. Then Mr. Young, we, we have hanging from there, two layers of Jimson board. Um, and they're hung actually by springs so that the sound cannot go through the, the springs and travel to, to the ceiling above. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Can I jump in? Yes, yes go right here, Mr. Of course. If, if I may, and, and respectfully, I, it's an impressive level of detail, and I appreciate the passion that the team is bringing to it too. Uh, absolutely, but respectfully, I, I'm not sure that this may be more information than we need. Okay, well then, um, uh, Mr. Young, can you start to skip four down? Uh, Mr. Shapiro, we, we we appreciate that. We 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 just wanted to uh, certainly uh, be over prepared rather than the opposite. Uh, when you say that, do, do you, this is all material that's generally in our, in our submissions. Do you want any discussion about the other items, the odor, the waste removal, or should we just go forward to conclude our testimony and answer, uh, you know, ask. Wait, I'll see where I'll see where my colleagues are, but, uh, based on what I've seen in the record, I'm comfortable with, uh, hearing a conclusion, but I, I certainly don't want to step ahead of either of my colleagues. So let me, let me just opine. I was, I was hoping, uh, I'm glad commissioner Shapiro, um mentioned we, we we do review the record uh i did have one question especially when you talk about high end but we can get to that i think this will be better <laughs> advised this will be better advised that, and i will let the vice chair uh speak after me but this will be better advised if we ask our questions uh i think this is a very thorough job um from the uh submissions and let me just assure you in the public we do read <laughs> so so we already have pretty much uh, maybe not to the level of detail, but I think it's sufficient enough to move forward with, with our review and our actions. Uh, so I would agree with Commissioner, but, but also I take, I know that you all rehearse and I didn't want to take anything away from anybody. So I, if you want to rehearse and when the, when the lights come on, I wanted you to be able to proceed. So, you know, if we can condense more of it, uh, and, and we can kind of, I even thought you were going to stand on the record actually. Well, since, you okay. didn't, since you didn't, <laughs> since you didn't, well, I apologize that from the, from the from jumping out of the gate. Uh, no, sir. Uh, thank you very much for your comments, and certainly uh, you, you were going to you were going to ask Commissioner Vice Miller if he had a difference of opinion. This, this, but... Vice Chair Miller, Pine. Uh, I, I also appreciate the presentation. Uh, had reviewed the record. I guess um, I, I didn't get a chance to review the PowerPoint. If you want to just go through each of the slides for a couple of seconds, maybe without commentary, if somebody has a question about it, uh, we could ask it. But I, I think they are pretty self-explanatory since we had the previous information. But I, I would like 
because I didn't get a chance to look at the PowerPoint beforehand. If you, you want to just go through your PowerPoint um, and just without commentary, a couple seconds, and then if one of us has a question, we can ask about it. That might be Absolutely. more efficient. So, Mr. Young, we'll just flip it after five seconds or so. <laughs> Uh, uh, Mr. Young, could you go one higher, or two in the other direction? Yeah, there. So then I'll be quiet while you while you look quickly. <laughs> so we are so close to the end. Uh, close to the end. Okay. And, and, and say, so th these uh, these items are are just uh, number uh, commissioners. These are just uh, the, the the specified criteria in the regulations. Uh, and so those are the those are the high notes. Uh, treatment of odor and 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 uh, noise and um, and waste removal. And then there's a specific provision related to having uh, these materials along the walls. And that's all going to be provided. So. Um, We'll conclude and, and thank you for your patience and, and, and we're right here to answer any questions that you have. Okay, thank you all for your presentation. I want, I want you to rest assured that this is not our first uh, dog care case to be heard. So we're kind of familiar with the odor and the waste and the soundproofing, even though I think um, uh, Mr. Uh, Pastors really wanted to talk about the soundproof because I could tell the way it was laid out by the different layers and the the side and the materials used. He really wanted to. He really wanted to get into that, and I didn't want to take that from him. Even though we have kind of been through something similar, might not be some of the same materials. So we are very well aware of how you're preserving and how you're trying to make sure that you're uh, respectful of the of the community. So with that, let me open. I, I do want to come back to my high end, so I because I have a lot of neighbors who, but I want to be able to talk about uh, dog daycare to them, and they're going to think that I really know something about that, but uh, I will come back and ask my questions later. Um, uh, Commissioner Shapiro, any questions or comments? Um, oh, God, I'm so hesitant to ask this, but I need to. <laughs> Mr. Pastries, um, I discovered new dog poop bags online that allow me to actually flush down the toilet because they're biodegrade, they're, they're dog poop that to disintegrate with water. Am I making a mistake with that? And why don't you do the same technology? Well, we are not allowed to by city ordinance. I would, um, where the ordinance is different, what I would do is I would have a a, um, a container of organic chemical that I would put the waste in and then periodically dump that down the toilet um, and, and, and flush it. Um, but the city ordinance does not allow that. City ordinance requires me to put it in the dumpster. For commercial properties. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. This chair, I but you're doing exactly the right thing. question. But uh that I have no other question. This is a very thorough uh presentation that you've given. I think that the record is quite complete and I have no further questions, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh Vice Chair Miller. Uh thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, uh, Mr. Hughes and the others, uh Toll Brothers and uh, Mr. Patrick for your presentation. This evening, um, and um, congratulations on getting the uh, the child care and fitness facility space leased and operating and open. That's uh, great news, um, and I'm sure uh, Colby's dog care will also be um, a great addition for the immediate residents and the uh, nearby community. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, I'm not sure it affects our special exception review. Uh, well, does Colby's dog care operate elsewhere in the city at this time, or is this will be the first uh, one for this particular operator? Well, it will be the first one uh, ever. Um, this, is, this is a flagship uh, uh, location. Okay. Um, and um miss um Tamaris. Uh, miss Tamaris, um Timaris, uh sorry, I think uh, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Um just uh, unrelated of the so you you leased up the residential units in of this phase in 
500 plus units in 2019. I'm just curious what the occupancy rate, these are all rental units? Correct, 525 rental units. Yeah, so I'm just curious what the occupancy rate is and if that's uh, affected, been affected by the, well, that was shortly after you opened up, but um, was, was it affected by the pandemic? Um, we are about 80% occupied currently uh, of the 525 units. Um, and we we had had pretty steady growth uh, up until the pandemic. We did lose some occupancy. Um, we have uh, we have many uh, residents who I'm going to just describe move back home to their <laughs> live with their parents um, during the <coughs> pandemic. Um, and that that was a bit of a setback and, and we've seen return to growth since then. And the and the Lori Grand, the, which was just, I don't know if I got the right name for the first phase. That's is that over seven hundred units or? That is or, not our project. Uh, Dan like might project. be able to confirm. Okay. okay. I, I, actually, Commissioner, I, I don't have the exact numbers, but I believe it is um, closer to two hundred units. Okay. All right. The seven hundred was the total for the whole PUD. Okay. So I won't ask any question about occupancy of that since that's the owner's not here for that. Um, I have one question for, I guess, the app for Mr. Hughes and for OP on the specific conditions uh, to mitigate against odor, waste, and sound that are being proposed here. Um, and this may be a question for our council as well. Um, do those specific conditions, which are all great uh, in terms of a proposed mitigation plan, are they, do they become part, are they proposed to become part of our draft order or are they just referenced by exhibit? I, I didn't see a reference to them in the new language that's in the modification of significance. I'm just wondering how the specific conditions get uh, enforced. Does the ZA have to go back and look at the record and see what was here or is there a reference? To the exhibit, or did the conditions actually get incorporated in the order of this? What would be a special exception for the BZA, but it's a modification of significance of the B of the PUD. Uh, what's your understanding of that, Mr. Hughes? I just because I, I don't have an understanding of how that works. It's a, no, it's an excellent question. Um, I, I think generally it, it's um, we're asking for flexibility to add this use. This use is a special exception, so that is somewhat unusual. Uh, the, the language that, that uh, Mr. Cochran discussed with me that's provided, shared with me that's in the Office of Planning report, the details that uh, is one thing, but your point is right. Uh, it doesn't really tie to these conditions. So, um, by the way, let, let me interrupt myself because my screen is, I, I can't seem to see anyone, but can you still hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, we that's can. all that matters. Um, so, so I, I would, we certainly, I don't believe, have any objection to supplementing that that uh, um, that language that we're proposing to reference the the relevant exhibits in the record here that show, um, you know, our statement that, that that provides what we're proposing. If if staff and and you believe that's uh, your preference, uh, otherwise, to answer your question, I think it would be something that in the permitting process the the DCR, DCRA would come back and make sure that what's proposed in, in terms of construction build out is consistent with, with what we've shared with you today. Yeah, I'll ask the OOP about that and maybe our council when we go forward. But I, I think there would be, if still off the top of my head, a, a useful, useful for the order to not only permit the use, but to also to reference the proposed mitigating conditions. I think if this were a BZAK special exception, we would actually have the special, the specific conditions right in the order. It doesn't have to necessarily have to be that. It could be more flexible. It could just reference the exhibit or comparable mitigating measures because the technology yes, yes. for all that changes over time. So, uh, so I will, will, will. I'm glad you're willing to work with um, our council on that in the draft order. Absolutely, and if I, if, to kind of follow, I think your point. Um, my concern would 
with respect to just the plan that was shown is that the build out. I don't, I can't speak for, for Mr. Pastor. The build out could deviate. I, I'm just throwing this out as a conjecture from the, the specific. You know, the room orientations or, or, or the door entries and so forth. Yeah. And I wouldn't. Yeah, I don't want to see. I don't want to see this come back before us again. No, no, no. I, I think I think the relevant issues are, are more what we've shown you in the PowerPoint in terms yeah. of the noise and the odor and, 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 and so forth. The waste removal. That would be the commitment that would be referenced in the condition if, if that's agreeable to you and your. Yeah, your that's I, mean, that's I will see what my colleagues and the OP and council say, but yeah, that's I appreciate your willingness to work with us on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I, I think, um, and I would agree with the vice chair and also uh, my other colleague, Bruce Shapiro. I think this modification is significant from, from, from the record. Uh, and from the things that are being proposed, especially with the soundproofing that Mr. Uh, uh, let's see, Mr. Pastrich necessarily didn't get a chance to finish because I know he was very excited about it. But I come from the world of symphony. I love sound. Oh, okay, <laughs> but I, I still think though all that's involved is, is, is just needs to be codified and memorialized somewhere. Um, so as we won't have any issues and people have some certainty. Um, so I, now that takes it takes it for me for what we're supposed to do. I have some other questions and, and these are very helpful um, living in the community. You all are experts with dog daycare. What is high end? I didn't understand <laughs> what is high end. I, I really don't know what low end is, but what is the high end of, of care? So, so there are sort of two main philosophies or, or, or strategies in dog daycare. Uh, one is that you have an open room, all the dogs go in that open room all day long, all night long. Um, you have somebody who sleeps in the room with the dogs at night. Um, and another one is that you have rooms where you have um, kennels on the, on the outside. Uh, the dogs um, spend some time playing then sometime resting, um, and then they go back and play again, which A, pre uh, helps them, prevents them from becoming overly stimulated, um, which can in long term actually uh, change personality, um, and B, prevents them from um, uh, eventually playing to the point where they get hurt, exhausted and, and, and hurt. Um, uh, there's also, um, the law allows us to put, I think, I don't, I'm not sure, but I genuinely believe it to be uh, 20 dogs uh, with one person. And we're going to keep it generally under 10, in an extreme case, as many as 12 dogs playing with one person. Um, we're going to also, as I've done my site visits um, at other places in, in the area, um, often I see the person watching the dogs also on their cell phone or sitting down. Uh, we're not going to have a chair for our person to sit in. They're not allowed to play on their cell phone. They're, they're going to be interacting with the dogs the whole time. We're investing very heavily in odor control. Um, often when you walk into a dog daycare, there's a smell. Um, we, we find that the, 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 the folks that we're aiming for um, are often they're, what they're doing is they're getting a dog in order to try out parenthood um, or to demonstrate to our partner their ability to parent. And so we're, we're keeping a very heavy daycare um, look um, and feel to the place and, and smell to the place and, and throughout trying to have it uh, treated as if someone was putting their, their, their child in the space. Okay. Uh, Mr. Thank Mr. You Hood, um, if, I could, yes. if I could just interject here that the term high end you know takes my ear um i th I, don't, I don't think that mr pastrich meant it as as uh, distinguishing between a, a low end product and a high end everything i've heard and i share you know mr pastrich is very enthusiastic about about his his pro business here and i think it's going to be a great success and, and everything i've heard is every every all the care for all the pets is going to be very high end what I took from these very uh, uh, unusual suites, if you will, is more, I don't want to say like, uh, I think maybe a, a, a demanding, particularly demanding customer who might 
have an antisocial preacher or something like I don't want to put I don't I don't want to say anything negative toward anyone, but I just know if that's that's for more sp focused care of of particular pets. And, and Michael, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I just want to clarify that it's not a, a high end versus a low end care. It's it's a very high end for, uh, throughout your 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 operation. And, and I'll draw, I'll stop with that. Okay, I, I actually didn't take it that way. But I was thinking that you know it's just like when when I, I when I go on a when I'm flying somewhere I'm I'm in the second class but the first class so I was trying to figure out is there something additional, uh but but I I I get it I get it so I didn't take it that way I was just trying to figure okay. out what else my apologies so now my, my last question really absolutely has absolutely nothing to do with this hearing, it's for my own and I'm going to seize the moment because you all are the experts, um. My, my question is, when I was growing up, and I, I always talk to my wife about this, it's, even, she's from Jackson, Mississippi, so she, she says the same thing. We both say the same thing. Growing up here in D.C., I didn't see a lot of people at one time walking dogs when I was younger. I lived right here in War 5. And then I was thinking, well, maybe that was the reason most of the time I was jumping over somebody's fence to get away from a dog or jumping on, on somebody's car. Um, but I guess the laws have changed. People have changed. I noticed now everybody wants their dog, but years ago I didn't see that. What what actually prompted that, or, or did I miss something, or did I just not pay attention? Then I'm I'm just I've been wanting to ask that question. No, no, I'm, I'm seize the moment. I think that there are two two things. One is laws. I mean, when, when I was little, we'd let the dog out and he'd run out the front door, and then he'd come back. Okay. Uh, and I would as you know step in 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 things that dogs left behind and. <laughs> the world got tired of that, um, and 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 now if you let your dog uh, have uh, loose, then um, it'll get picked up by the city and you'll be fined, um, and that just doesn't happen. Um, and if you leave your dog in your backyard too long and it, it barks too loud, um, then uh, the, the city will come and talk to you about it. So that's one thing. I think dogs have also societally changed their position. Right. If, if you go back even 20 years, uh, no dog was allowed in a restaurant. No dog was allowed near food, uh, prepared food. Uh, uh, dogs weren't even allowed at an outdoor restaurant. Now, um, you know, I just moved from St. Petersburg, where the rule is if you want outdoor seating, you have to allow dogs. Um, the, the whole world has changed in, in, in the mentality. Um, there are now, um, you know, I was, I was talking to, to the uh, executive director of, of the uh, uh, Board of Veterinary Medicine, and, and they're now looking at uh, how, how close can animals come to a kitchen, um, as animals are now being seen less as pets and more as, as family members. Okay, I, I thank you very much for indulging me and everyone indulging me because I've been one to ask that question, but I, since I have the experts, I've learned a long time ago, seize the moment. So thank you both uh, and Mr. Hughes for, for providing that information to us. Any follow up questions, commissioners? Okay, certainly I don't have any additional ones. Do we have anyone here from ANC 6C, Michelle? I don't believe so. I do know we have a letter. Uh, let me double check, but I don't think so. I do not see anyone. Okay, let's go to the Office of Planning Report, Mr. Cochran. And and as he always does, let's keep it brief. <laughs> I have too good a memory from the last hearing. <laughs> Take care. Um, I'm Steve Cochran, uh, and I'm presenting OP's uh, uh, testimony for OP for case uh, uh, 05-36M. And in reference to a comment from Mr. Hughes earlier, yes, I have been professionally involved with this site since the last century. The PUDs, the original PUD goes back to 1995. Uh, okay, so on this one, OP is recommending approval of the modification of significance for this PUD. That includes a special exception to use approximately 6,900 square feet for animal sales, care, and boarding. Uh, and uh, additions to condition two of order 06 36 I. Uh, these, this uh, change in the condition is noted in OP's report, and it would enable the requested special exception use. And I can 
answer uh, Mr. Shapiro's, or at least try to address Mr. Shapiro's question. No, it was Mr. Miller's question later. Um, the PUD occupies all the square as has been described, except for a dog park at the corner of 3rd and L. The uses are governed by the MU uh, use group F uh, category associated with the PUD related MU9 zone. Uh, the proposed use would be located at the corner of 2nd and L on the ground floor and the OP uh, illustration of this does have north going pointing upwards. Um, there would be no changes to any other space or uses in the building. All of these are matter of right and consistent with the PUD orders. However, the requested use must meet the specific use conditions in U 516.1B and the general special exception criteria in uh, uh, subtitle X chapter nine. Uh, the application and the use would meet all of those conditions and criteria as we presented in our report. Um, and today, ANC uh, 6C uh, filed a letter in support of the report. Uh, not our report, but the application, sorry. Um, at this point, I'd be happy to stand on the record, but I could also give you a little bit more information about how the application meets the uh, requirements uh, more specifically, if you'd like. Okay. Otherwise, um, I'm happy to answer questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cochran, as always. And I think the report is very thorough, as always. So thank you very much. Let's see if we have any questions, commissioners. Uh, any questions of Mr. Cochran, um, Vice Chair Miller? Thank you, Mr. Cochran, for your report. Yeah. So I would just uh, be interested in your comment on whether or not you think there needs to be any language in addition to what's proposed um, that permits the dog care, boarding, and grooming use. Okay. Also, in reference the conditions that are in your that are referenced in your report or in the exhibits that have been provided by the applicant. Do we have? Do we need anything in the order? Uh, in your opinion, to to reference those specific conditions or comparable conditions that mitigate against the odor, waste, and noise, which the, those those standards in the in the zoning regulations are designed to address. For an answer that would hold up to legal inquiry, I'd have to defer uh, uh, to uh, OAG or to um, uh, Ms. Steingasser. Uh, but just from a common sense standpoint. I might suggest that uh, condition two have the following phrase added on to the end of it. Uh, actually, let's see. Let me go back to my report. Oh, anyway, you've got the language uh, of what we added to the condition. Um, and to that, you might want to add, which shall be fitted out and operated in accordance with the materials and measures described in Exhibit 27 through 27D. Thank you. I, I think that's a good suggestion, and we'll hear from um, maybe OAG. Well, we'll or we'll hear from OAG, or we'll just let the applicant work that out with OAG for the draft order. So I, I appreciate just hearing your perspective on that. Thank you. Yeah, you have questions? Okay. Um, Mr. Hughes, does the applicant have any questions of Mr. Cochran? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, as always, Mr. Cochran. We appreciate it. Um, and again, I don't believe we have anyone here from the ANC, Michelle. 6C. Do we have anyone from ANC 6C? Okay. All right. Um, other government reports. I did not see any. Uh, let me go to the ANC report. Uh, as stated by Mr. Cochran, we did get the letter in. From ANC 6C, we got one supporting the 35 day, and then we have another one. Let me let me see. This is our exhibit. Um, second, pull it up. It's 55. Exhibit 36, I believe. No, it's exhibit 35. Uh, and it says, does it have the vote? We write to state ANC 6C support for the requested modifications of. Zoning Commission case 0536, the modest change, this is what they say, the modest change would add a welcome business service for nearby pet owners. We find this application satisf 
satisfies the requirements of Title U, Section 516.1b, such that the proposed operation will not impose objectionable conditions of other adverse effects on residents of the building or nearby properties. And I will continue to read it. Thank you for giving us the great weight of our views, ANC 6C. So if they don't find this objectionable. Ms. Shellen, do we have anyone who's here to testify either in support, opposition, or undeclared? We do. Um, I don't see the first person on the list in support is um, Anthony Petty. I do not see him. Um, and then we have um, Mr. Tefera. I don't see that person in our list either. Um, we do have a call in user, but that phone number is not coming up. I don't know, Mr. Young, if you want to try bringing that person on to see who that caller is. Because that phone number is not registered. So basically, um, we don't have we don't have anybody to testify other than the phone number that we're checking now. No, we have in opposition, Llewellyn Jones okay. is on. And other than that, there was one person that was undeclared. Okay. And um, that is uh, Patty Cheney. Okay, let's let's other bring than everybody. That, up. That's all I've got. Okay, so we, we have called for everyone and I think we have two people and one person who may be un unidentified that's on the phone. Uh, let's bring everybody up so we can go ahead and uh, we'll start with Mr. Jones, Llewellyn, Llewellyn Jones, there you are. Yes, hi, and you thank you. Yeah, um, uh, I'm a uh, resident of the 200 block K Street, uh, been here for about 15 years. I have to admit, uh, when I first saw the uh, invitation uh, for um, commenting, I thought it was about the uh, construction project on the next block over, uh, which has uh, many more issues that were uh, uh, the neighbors are trying to deal with. Um, but so that said, I, I still wanted to have some comments uh, as a uh, homeowner and uh, who has children and a cat and not a dog. We're seeing the huge influx of dogs in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, which is great. We're seeing like it's great to see the neighborhood alive and a lot of people out and about at the dog park is fantastic. Um, it's it's there are some issues about the what was being talked about the smell and the uh, um, and the uh, you know the dog stuff that's around. That in general, people are really great about it, but with more dogs and more dogs coming for the the service that's going to be here, there's going to be even more dogs. And what we're seeing is, you know, like these trash cans are full of bags of dog poop uh, and there's just dog urine everywhere and the smell in the summer months. It's really something else. And uh, to be honest, I'm not actually against the project, but I'm hoping that the, the, the folks involved will might uh, be willing to say something to, you know, help. Uh, uh, deal with these issues that are outside of the business, just sort of in the surrounding blocks. Um, you know, like right now, there's just like, you know, there's this little sliver of a place for kids to go play at and there's, you know, it's lots of stuff for dogs. Uh, you know, I was wondering if there's something, you know, you guys could help contribute to like helping, you know, I don't know if it's like hosing down the area around or if there's some way to deal with the sort of just what it's going to be a, an even larger overflow of dog poop in the garbage cans around. Things like that. Um, I mean, I don't have any specific ideas about what could be done, but I'm hoping to hear what what you guys might say to that. Okay, um, I will let them respond if they choose to respond. Um, so that's not necessarily in our belly wick, but if they choose to respond, because I tell you, some of the same issues that you you're dealing with, Mr. Uh, Jones, is some of the same that the whole city, uh, to a certain point, is dealing with. It's about balancing. It's about being respectful. Uh, I know when people take their dogs for a walk, what I've never figured out is let your dog do what you're going to do there and then take them for a walk. No, they'll, their grass nice and green and their minds is brown. So either way, it's, it's a, it's, so those are some of the same issues that we all are dealing with, but we all got to learn to live here together. Dogs, you know, I know I, I like playing with the dogs when they don't try to bite me, but, uh, but uh, you know, we all, so we got to balance it. We have to balance that. So let me hear from the next person. Who, that, who was it again, Michelle? And then we'll, 
Mr. Jones, don't go anywhere. We may have some questions or we may get a response. You there me? was anybody else. I thought it was somebody on the phone. They, they well, were. there was a call or a call in, but um, I don't think Mr. Young was able to, or maybe he did check and see. Okay. Mr. Young, were you able to find out who the caller was? I don't know who it is. I unmuted them, but they didn't say anything. Okay. You well, did let unmute the, them. Let the yeah. reflect that we tried to reach out to everyone to make sure everyone were able to participate. Okay. So, Mr. Tamara, so. Tim Morris and Mr. Pastors, do you all have any responses to Mr. Jones or, or would you? Sure. I guess you all would be good. You all would be neighbors, so you can probably continue that collaboration later. But do you have a response for him now, if you like? If, if before before I uh, let me just jump in, if I could. Uh, with respect to Mr. Jones's concern about uh, odor uh, and uh, piling up of dog waste and the bends and so forth uh, to clarify that the uh, uh, the proposed use that we're here today to uh, seek your approval for what the, the dogs are not going to be walked in the community uh, there's it's not a matter of them staying at the dog care and then being walked around and then the waste left in the in the bat in the, in the trash containers so it's actually going to you know, we think that it'll actually uh, take dogs off the streets, if you will. If that doesn't sound right, but th th there won't be they won't, this this use does not add to that at all. In fact, we believe it will reduce it. And uh, and as we discussed before, there's a very uh, robust program that we've got in place to make sure that there's not any smell or waste emanating from inside the building. So I don't think it it is a, a we appreciate the concern, but we don't think that this use adds to that whatsoever, and in fact should should improve it uh, somewhat. And then, uh, on, as to the unrelated issues in terms of amenities, uh, Mally, if maybe you could speak to that and the and the the, the items around the the perimeter of the building. You know, yeah, it, it, absolutely. Um, I I think the the um, concerns or observations that Mr. Jones. Uh, mentioned are all things that we share um, in the interest of the community and the neighborhood. Um, our, our residents are walking those same sidewalks uh, that you are as a homeowner across the street. Um, and our intention is to be a good neighbor and, and proactive and work together. And as Mr. Hood suggested, you know, happy to continue this conversation offline. Great. And Mr. Hughes, certainly, I, I would not say that. Uh... Any of this has any bearing on us. I think the gentleman, Mr. Jones, was doing exactly what I was doing, getting educated and also seizing the moment. Uh, you got experts moving in your neighborhood, <laughs> you seize the moment, you tap into that expertise. And I think that's what he was doing. Uh, Mr. Absolutely. Jones, I'm sure they're, they're looking forward to continue to having a discussion with you and all those who are concerned. And, and I'm sure they can give some of that, uh, Mr. Passage, uh, I'm sure he has about four or five hours. That he <laughs> can really give you the passion that he has. And I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> you can find my phone number on my website. I'm happy to talk to you. Okay. Um, we good, Mr. Jones? You, you're on mute. Mr. Jones, you're still on mute. There you go. All right, thanks. Uh, one, one idea I'll just throw out there, I don't need to discuss it, but might be helping to contribute to the NOMA bid. Those are the folks that have been cleaning up uh, around the area. Uh, but I, I can yeah, continue this discussion uh, offline there. Great, thank you. We, we look forward to that. And uh, one of my colleagues actually just, just joined the bid uh, board. So absolutely, to be continued. Great. Okay, sounds great. That's, that's what I always call a good neighbor policy. Okay, any, any, I think we've cleared all of those who wanted to testify. Mr. Hughes, do you have any closing or rebuttal? No rebuttal, no, no rebuttal and a, ver a very brief closing. Uh, and of all the things we've mentioned, I, I'm not sure if, if Mr. Pastrich mentioned it or not, but it, you know, we, we have been pursuing uh, this approval for, for several months. If the commission will maybe recall, we had originally filed this as a modification of consequence uh and and that was considered back in april and it was deemed that we needed to have a public hearing uh and so uh, here we are today and and, and you know we we've uh we've enjoyed we've taken the mo made the most of it and enjoyed our time with you here today hopefully we have you know clarified some things but uh, um what i'm trying to say is that we, we we believe this is 
a much needed use in the community. We believe it's totally consistent with the programming for the for the, for the building and 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 a, a great amenity for the for the building residents and the neighbors. Uh, and and the, the health the health emergency has only exacerbated the need. And uh, you know what we had sort of uh, been concerned and, and noted in our first filings was that when the world starts to come back to normal, there's going to be an even bigger need. And I think that's played out somewhat over. The past few months, unfortunately, uh, with with animals being abandoned and so forth. Uh, and so, what I'm trying to say, Commissioner and, and members of the commission, is um, we, we we request your approval, and uh, we'd like to get this uh, opened and, and and operating just as soon as possible. So, thank you very much for your time and and consideration. And, and we just uh, we would request your approval. Thank you. And, and um, that that concludes the applicant's presentation. Thank you, um, Mr. Hughes and, and colleagues, as you know, we read through that Mr. Hughes would like a mentioned decision, but before we go there, um, vice chair Miller mentioned <clears throat> about some the conditions. I want to ask Ms. Kane to come up. Uh, and, and kind of explain a path forward. We probably can leave the flexibility for OAG as well as OP. Uh, but Ms. Kane, if you could kind of help us with that. Yeah, so I think the condition that was proposed by the office of planning um, should work. Um, the office of the attorney general would just request some flexibility with the final language to make sure that all of the sort of sub exhibits in exhibit 27 that capture the different elements of the sound attenuation and the odor control are properly captured and that there's also enough flexibility built in so that the applicant doesn't have to come back as vice chair Miller said, you know, for subsequent modifications. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Kane, any questions of Ms. Kane right now? Or are we good, Vice Chair? Thank you, Ms. Kane. I, I, I agree entirely with what you said. And I appreciate okay. you know, everyone's willingness to work together on that. Right. Okay, I think this has been very informative. Uh, Mr. Hughes asked us, but didn't ask us. He didn't say the exact words, so I'm going to say it. He would like a bench decision. Uh, I don't see any hesitation unless my colleagues have a reservation on that. Uh, and I'm looking at him to see if anybody's res reserved or not doing that tonight, but uh, okay. So would somebody like to make a motion? Do I want to, should I defer to the dog owner in our group? <laughs> should you refer I'm to the grandpa me? of a dog owner, but uh, <laughs> I'm def uh, not that uh, you don't have to recuse yourself or anything, but. <laughs> No, I think a lot of people have to recuse themselves if that's the case. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just being facetious. Uh, no, no, we know. We know. Uh, that's some fun sometime. <laughs> I will move approval of uh, Sunny Commission case number 05-36M, um, toll DC to LP modification of significance. It's square 749, lots 826 and 827, uh, 200 K Street Northeast, uh, a previously approved PUD to include this uh, particular uh, dog care, grooming, and boarding use. And ask for a second. And I would second that. And uh, another thing I would add is to make sure that the motion includes the uh, condition language that we had discussed. Okay. I see. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Sure. It's been moved and probably second, uh, amended by uh, Commissioner Shapiro to include the conditions as discussed moving forward OAG and OP with the flexibility for them to work that out. Uh, any further discussion? Not hearing Michelle, could you do a roll call vote, please? Yes, Commissioner Miller. Uh, yes. Commissioner Shapiro. Yes. I think you called my name. I, I don't know oh, if you're muted. Sorry. Commissioner Hood? Yes. The vote is three to zero to two to approve zoning commission case number 05-36M for final action. Um, and that is Commissioner May not present com and the architect of the Capitol representative not present. And this is approving with the conditions as discussed. And I believe, um, uh, Mr. Hughes asked for a summary order. Is the commission approving that? I've seen. Yes, summary order is sufficient. Summary order is sufficient. Other than that, that is all I have. Okay, I want to thank everyone for their participation tonight. We appreciate it. a lot of it. it. Might not necessarily have been germane to our proceedings, but it's very helpful just in everyday life. Uh, so we appreciate that. The zoning commission will be meeting again uh, September the 27th. 
and this is CQ Metro Land LLC 20-22. We will be 4 p.m. on these same platforms, which is this coming Monday. Uh, Michelle, do we have anything else? No, sir. Okay, I want to thank everyone again for their participation tonight, and this hearing is adjourned. Good night. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you.